do you want to be cool and deal tons of damage? Wow. Then you're at the right place because we'll be teaching you all the basics you need to know about the greatsword before you take it into a real hunt. First, we have to take a look at the controls. We'll list every move the greatsword has for completion's sake, but some of them are just not worth using because they are simply too weak and we're all about big numbers. We'll make sure to point out the bad moves, so don't worry about that. Also, we'll be using PlayStation buttons to reference the controls, but you can easily translate those to your own controller's equivalent. While standing with your weapon sheathed, pressing the triangle button will unsheath your weapon, but this is really slow and never useful. Instead, hold the left stick in a direction while pressing triangle to draw into an overhead slash. You can also hold the triangle button to charge up your draw attack, which will greatly increase the damage you'll do upon releasing the button. Charge levels are represented by your greatsword glowing in different colors. Red means you're at level 1, orange is level 2, and yellow is level 3, which is the highest charge level and does the most damage. If you keep holding the charge button for too long after reaching yellow, you will overcharge, which will drop your charge level down to orange and force you to release your attack. Try to avoid overcharging. While charging, you can also slightly turn to either side by using the left stick, which lets you adjust your aim. With your weapon unsheathed, pressing circle will do a wide sweep, and pressing triangle and circle at the same time will do a rising slash. Both of these attacks are much weaker than the charge slash, and don't have any good follow-ups, so they are useless unless you want to launch your teammates. Pressing or holding the triangle button will do an overhead or charge slash, which we already talked about earlier. After a charge slash, you can combo into either of the aforementioned wide sweep or rising slash or a side slap by pressing triangle again with your left stick in neutral. The sweep and rising slash will reset your combo chain to the charge slash, while the slap will let you continue to strong charge slash. Despite this, all three of these follow-up moves are pretty much useless. Instead, our best option is to go straight into strong charge slash by pushing the left stick forward and holding the triangle button. This move, as the name suggests, is a stronger version of the regular CS, meaning you can charge it up and turn with it and then release the button to attack. After the SCS, we can once again do the side slap and rising slash. These will put us back to the strong charge slash in our combo chain, and are rarely useful. Pressing circle will let us do a strong wide slash, which does more damage depending on the charge level of your previous SCS. This attack can be followed by a TCS, so it advances our combo chain. After a strong charged or a strong wide slash, pushing the left stick forward and holding triangle will let us enter True Charge Slash, which is our strongest move. It also functions like the other charge attacks but has a much longer animation. The TCS has two hits, and if the first small hit connects with the monster's weak spot, then the second big hit will be empowered, gaining a significant damage boost. Pressing and holding R2 will let you guard with your greatsword, even if your weapon is currently sheathed. Guarding is something you should only use on roars or wind pressure, and only if you have no better option. Blocking actual attacks will destroy your sharpness, and we have better defensive options that we'll talk about soon. While guarding, you can kick by pressing triangle, which can then be followed with a tackle by pressing triangle again. The tackle is a very important part of greatsword play. You can do this move by pressing triangle after a roll or kick, or by pressing circle while charging any of your charged attacks. You can also do a tackle after the regular wide sweep by pressing circle, but this is not useful at all. This move gives you damage reduction and more importantly hyper armor, allowing you to tank through most attacks without being knocked down. It also does KO damage based on your current charge level and skips your current charge slash. This means that if you do a tackle after a roll, kick, or while charging the regular charge slash, your next charge attack will be a strong slash, and if you cancel the SCS or TCS with it, your next charge attack will be a TCS. This makes tackle a very versatile move for both defense and offense, as it allows you to tank through enemy attacks and shortcut into TCS. The tackle can be followed up by a leaping wide slash by pressing circle, a side blow by pressing R2 and triangle, or, as we said before, the next charge slash by holding triangle. The first two options are mostly useless, so don't worry about them. We also have silk bind moves. The first one, unlocked by default, is called Hunting Edge. You need two wire bugs to activate it, which you can do by pushing the left stick in the direction you want to fly, and then pressing L2 and triangle. If you hit a monster, your hunter will jump into the air 
and you can follow up with a charge plunging thrust by holding R2 or a jumping charge slash by holding triangle. You can follow up both of these moves with either a side blow by pressing triangle or a strong wide slash with circle, which is the better option most of the time, as that move can be followed up with a TCS. If you connect with the monster at the end of Hunting Edge's arc, you won't be able to jump off the monster. We also have to talk about aerial attacks. You'll mostly be doing these when jumping off monsters after wyvern riding, or when you're having your day ruined by ledges. While in the air, press and hold triangle to do a jumping charge slash. This is a weaker version of the hunting edges follow up. Another aerial option is the plunging thrust, which you can do by pressing R2. This one can be followed up with a strong charge slash by holding triangle, or a strong wide slash by pressing circle. Another silkbind move the GS has is the power sheath, which requires one wire bug to use. You can perform it by holding the left stick in the direction you want to go and pressing L2 in circle. The beginning of the move has iframes, and at the end of it, you'll receive a damage boost for 20 seconds. The last moves that we have yet to talk about are switch skills. If you want more in-depth information and comparison between these moves and their alternatives, make sure to check out our switch skill guide in the top right corner. The true charge slash can be replaced by the rage slash, which is unlocked after completing the hub quest called Grasp the Greatsword. The rage slash is also a charge attack, but unlike others, it can be unleashed in any direction by aiming with the left stick as you're releasing triangle. It also has damage reduction and hyper armor while charging, so you can't be knocked out of it by most monster attacks. Taking damage while charging the Rage Slash will make your attack do more damage. The Tackle has an alternative switch skill called Guard Tackle, which is unlocked automatically while progressing in the story. As the name suggests, this is a guard move that lets you block attacks at the cost of sharpness. The gimmick of this move is that no matter where you are in your combo chain, blocking an attack with it will let you instantly go into your strongest charged attack, be it TCS or Rage Slash. This skill is really difficult to use effectively, so we don't recommend it for beginners. The Hunting Edge can be replaced by Adamant Charge Slash after unlocking it by crafting 8 unique greatswords at the smithy. This attack is basically a strong charge slash that does more damage, has hyper armor from beginning until you release your attack, and can be cast in any direction. It also only costs one wire bug to use. You can also control the distance you travel. Pushing the left stick in any direction as your hunter starts sliding will make you go further, and leaving it in neutral will move you a shorter distance. Now you might be asking, which switch skills should I use? Without going into too much detail, Tackle is better than Guard Tackle and Adamant Charge Slash is better than Hunting Edge, so these are the two obvious choices. As for the last choice, TCS is in general better than Rage Slash, but it's harder to use and a few of the monsters barely have any TCS openings. On those few monsters, Rage Slash is better. Going forward in the video, we'll be assuming that you're using Tackle, Adamant Slash, and TCS, but we'll talk about Rage Slash as well. Most of our damage comes from our Charge Slashes. This includes the regular, strong, Adamant, and true Charge Slash. We'll also be using the Tackle along with Adamant Slash for defense and shortcutting into TCS. Except for the occasional aerial attack and strong wide slash, every other move is either useless or extremely situational. So don't worry about using those just yet. Our core combo is the Charge Slash, Strong Charge Slash, TCS Chain, aka the Triple Charge Slash combo. Keep in mind that we can turn while charging each attack, which can help us a lot with our positioning. Also remember that we can use the tackle to skip ahead in the combo. We'll be doing this when we don't have enough time to do all three charge slashes, or if we need the hyper armor to tank an attack. If you want to get back into the combo right after rolling, you should either tackle or adamant slash depending on your distance from the monster. Both of these will let you start from the strong charge slash. After a level 3 strong or adamant slash, the strong wide sweep can be an excellent combo extender for some extra damage. If this is your first time playing GS, we highly recommend practicing the moves and combos in the training area to get a feel for them. The entire core combo takes very long to execute, so we'll have to adapt the length of it using charge levels and tackles depending on how big our opening is. In a real hunt, we won't always have the time to do the entire combo, and even if we do, we won't be fully charging up all three of the attacks. 
If there is enough time to land a combo ending with TCS, we'll always prioritize charging TCS because that does the most damage. After finishing an attack, notice that your hunter will be unable to walk for a long time. This is a recovery animation, which can be cancelled by using wire bug moves or rolling. Note that silk binds won't be usable after a certain amount of time has passed in the recovery animation. For example, after a TCS, you won't be able to power sheath once your hunter has started to lift the sword from the ground. In these cases, rolling is the only way to get out of the recovery. Cancelling the recovery animation of our attacks is an extremely important element of greatsword gameplay that you should definitely make a habit of. You should always roll or power sheath after finishing a combo. If a monster is about to hit you right after you finish an attack, don't panic. Be patient and delay your roll slash power sheath to iframe their attack right before it hits you. Power sheath has more than twice the invincibility frames of the regular roll, but keep in mind that it will become unusable if you wait too long during the recovery animation. Greatsword's playstyle is known as hit and run, which means when you're not attacking, you should always keep your weapon sheathed. The reason for this is that our movement is extremely slow when holding the weapon, and keeping it sheathed lets us move at normal speed to easily avoid the monster's attacks and position ourselves for a punish. The Greatsword's moves are generally hard hitting, but slow. Charging them up takes long and leaves us vulnerable for the duration. This is especially true for our strongest attack, the TCS. Because of this, effective use of this weapon relies a lot on knowing the monster's attacks and openings, more so than any other weapon in the game. This takes a long time to learn, so don't be discouraged if you're getting hit a lot at first. Every monster is different, and there is no universal solution to all of them. If you want to get better at Greatsword, we highly recommend playing solo. Multiplayer is extremely chaotic, and with the monsters constantly switching aggro and randomly getting flinched by your teammates, Learning their moveset becomes nearly impossible. There are monsters you're already familiar with. Try to practice on those first. Otherwise, Narwa and Apex Rathian are both great matchups for this weapon. Remember to keep your weapon sheathed, just like we said, and avoid the monster's attacks. Then, go in for a punish when they stand still after a move. This is called an opening, which is a safe and guaranteed opportunity for us to land an attack or combo. Openings have different lengths and predictabilities. Some are only long enough to land a single overhead slash, while others are much longer, allowing us to land both a level 3 adamant slash and a TCS. Some punishes also involve tanking an attack of the monster with a tackle or adamant slash. To fully exploit openings, you'll have to learn to identify the monster's attacks early on in their animation. Monsters can also have attack patterns, which means they will always do the same attacks in a sequence. These patterns can also change depending on the monster's state and your position relative to the monster. Topples and statuses such as KO and Paralysis are some of the longest openings, so you should always try to land at least a level 3 TCS on them. We'll go into more detail about these in the advanced guide. Now let's talk about Rage Slash specifically. This move is easier to use than TCS, but to make full use of it, it's still important to know monster patterns and openings. Ideally, you want to start Rage Slash right before getting hit by a monster to get the increased damage, and then land your empowered hit on the opening afterwards. Against unpredictable monsters who don't have patterns, Rage Slash requires an act first, think later approach, meaning you'll often find yourself entering Rage Slash first and hoping that the monster does the right attack. Don't try to tackle everything. A very common mistake among beginners that they will keep tackling attacks repeatedly, hoping to eventually land a TCS. This is a trap that will lead you to miss out on many shorter openings, mess up your positioning for the TCS, and unnecessarily destroy your health bar. While you can get away with doing this on the weaker monsters, it can lead you to develop this playstyle into a bad habit, which will cause you a lot of cards on the more difficult bosses, and eventually in Master Rank. Instead of spamming tackle hoping for the right attack, observe the monster and react accordingly to what they're doing. Similar to the last point, don't try to TCS everything. TCS is our strongest move, but it requires long openings to land. For the shorter openings, we have our regular, strong, and adamant charge slash. Use these instead if you keep missing the TCS on certain openings. Don't be greedy. Charging your attacks all the way up to yellow does the most damage, but you don't always have the time to charge and safely land a level 3 attack. Sometimes you'll only have time to land a level 2, 
or just a regular draw slash. It's better to land a guaranteed hit than to risk missing. Also, remember not to overcharge your attacks. Greatsword requires different sets compared to other melee weapons because it greatly benefits from some unique armor skills. The first one is Focus, which makes charging up our attacks significantly faster. This skill is both a huge quality of life and damage increase for GS. It makes the weapon feel a lot more fluid and responsive, and you'll be able to fit in more charge levels during openings, letting you do more damage. Try to get Focus 3 ASAP, as there is a night and day difference between non-Focus and Focus 3 GS. The second must-have skill is Stun Resistance. Yes, you heard that right. In Rise, Hyper Armor doesn't protect you from KO, which means that you can get stunned in the middle of Tackle, Adamant, and Rage Slash. This makes Stun Resistance 3 mandatory for Greatsword. Next, we have our generic damage skills. Weakness Exploit is the most important, followed by Crit Boost, Critical Eye, and Attack Boost or Dragon Heart. If you're playing multiplayer, you should also use Flinch Free. All of Greatsword's moves have built-in flinch free, but you can still get flinched when you're not attacking. This happens often after rolling. If you're looking for endgame sets, make sure to check out our latest set video. Now that's all the basic universal knowledge you need to know before playing Greatsword and Rise. We hope you found this video useful and that you'll enjoy playing this amazing weapon. We'll also have an advanced guide coming out soon, so stay tuned!